Um, I'd love to throw it open to questions in a couple of minutes, but I want to uh, ask PJ a question related to what Amr was saying in terms of regimes. I mean, I think we both agree it isn't really a debate about what role social media played. It played a big role, and it's a tool, like any tool, like the printing press, like the telegraph, like the radio. Uh, you know, Gutenberg was a, you know, Martin Luther thanked Gutenberg for ushering in the Reformation, but, you know, Hitler also published Mein Kampf, which caused a revolution in Germany. So I would argue that it's, it's a neutral thing, and it can be used for good or ill. But why can't governments use social media to, in either good ways to help their agenda or in bad ways? I mean, we saw in 2008 Barack Obama used social media in a way that was, that was truly revolutionary. Um, you know, you can have bad folks who do that too, and you can have repressive governments who might say, you know what, let's take a page from that book and, and use it ourselves. Oh, no, governments are, in fact, uh, you know, using uh, social media. And, and it, it is a learning process to take, a, in particularly a hidebound, uh, conservative bureaucracy like the Department of State. You know, people who, act, they, they do wear striped pants uh, and, uh, and, and have had a traditional way of doing business quietly, you know, uh, talking government to government. When Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State, she said, we have to find ways to uh, promote a conversation beyond governments, uh, you know, uh, government to people, uh, and social media has been a very important uh, mechanism uh, to do that. Uh, when I was being uh, in the confirmation process to be Assistant Secretary of State, my daughter said, are you going to tweet? I went, am I going to what? <laughs> um, but I had some energetic young staffers who came to me early on and said, you've got to tweet. You know, 32,000 followers later, I'm still six million behind Lady Gaga. Um, but, but, uh, but it is something that is important, and I am on that graphic uh, that we, we, uh, we pointed out earlier. Uh, you know, that said, bureaucracies are, in fact, going to have to relinquish, you know, some control over the message. Um, we, we did have an infamous example where one of our staffers overseas, uh, you know, was in Damascus and tweeted about a, the greatest uh, frappuccino he had ever, re ever had, you know, while on company time. And uh, that got to the attention of the Deputy Secretary of State who turned to me and said, maybe we should clear his tweets in advance. When I said, it defeats the purpose. <laughs> I said, you, you've got to entrust your key messengers uh, to know, uh, you know how to message using this medium and to take advantage of that to, to gain the influence and perspective uh, that you want to. Uh, I did that, and I did that, I think, to, uh, to fairly significant effect. I, I mean, every once in a while, um, you know, someone come to me and said, well, we didn't like your tweet. Uh, you lost the nuance of our policy. I, I said, what, what nuance can you do in 140 characters? Uh, but it, it, was, it was something that really did have, have power. I, I was once with Secretary Clinton, and we were holding a bilateral, kind of the bread and butter of diplomacy at the State Department. And she was introducing us, our delegation, to the uh, visiting delegation from the Middle East. And, they, and she said, this is our assistant secretary for public affairs. And the foreign minister said, oh, I know him. I follow him on Twitter. You know. uh, so it, it is something that people see. You know, w one very quick war story. We, early this year, there was a uh, disagreement between the United States and Argentina over um, uh, some equipment that had come into Argentina for an exercise. And, um, and they held up our equipment, and I'm looking at how to try to influence, uh, you know, coverage in uh, uh, in Argentina. But you know, it wasn't a story that was being covered here in the United States. So I find, but you know, how do you how do you say, you know, communications and military equipment in 140 characters? So I finally just said, uh, we're disappointed in Argentina, and we want our stuff back. Um, one, it, it actually then created a story, and two, uh, our desk officer was woken up in the middle of the night, and, and the Argentine government issued a formal complaint because of my tweet. That, that tells you then that, that actually there's, there's real uh, potential you know, to use these tools uh, in, to supplement your traditional ways of doing business and have an impact in the target populations that you have in mind. I think that actually is an interesting lesson for organizations and entities, news organizations or brands, because you know, the whole currency of social media is authenticity. If you're editing tweets or policing them, 
they don't, they're not authentic, they don't catch on, people can, people can suss it out, and it becomes less popular. Um, so we don't do that either. I'd love to uh, have questions from the audience for any of us or any subject where you can give a speech. Uh, we were supposed to have uh, Twitter questions, but I'm not seeing them up here unless there are no questions at all. Um, anyone have a question? If I don't get one, I'll ask a question for Amir. Um, so the, you, you know, one of the issues of, of, of the Egyptian revolution is it's creating a generation of, of young people who are adept at social media, uh, who also have these now, I would imagine, incredibly high expectations about what, what will be the result of it now. Is there a chance that it could, it could curdle and we could see a, a revolution that actually becomes bloody because people are not seeing the change that they want. I'm not talking about it a week from now or two weeks from now, but a year from now or two years from now. Actually, uh, all the options are open. Uh, we can't predict anything now because for 30 years we didn't know who we are. We didn't know what the ma ma mass public uh, really want. It was like you had a population of people who don't speak, who don't say what they want, who are afraid to tell their identity. We had a, like, you know, when, when anybody is like in his 20s, he had this identity, identity crisis. We have now identity crisis in Egypt. We don't know who we are. We don't know who the majority is. So all the options, I think, are open. But uh, what, I, what I really think is uh, the minority will have a better chance to speak out after now. Uh, uh, maybe I'm more optimistic than the others, but I don't think it's going to be bloody anymore. I don't think uh, it's going to be uh, corrupted as it was, uh, not by any means. Uh, I think the future is better than today. Uh, that thing uh, now, now is that everyone has a voice. That wasn't the case back then. Actually, uh, we made like a social announcement. I made it myself. Uh, it was independently made, a, a TV ad that I made and put it on YouTube before the uh, 2010 uh, elections, the parliament elections. And it was about several people saying their opinion about the country, but it was all muted. You can listen to all the mm -hmm. environment, but you can't listen to the voice.